In this video, I'm going to be doing a valve clearance check on a 2018 Suzuki DL650 V-Strom. This video is going to be a check, not an adjustment. Uh, if I end up doing an adjustment, that'll be a separate video. Uh, this bike only has 5,000 miles on it, but it's like negative 4 degrees outside, and I thought, why, why not? Let's figure out what's in there. Shouldn't be out of spec, only 5,000 miles in, but considering I already know what they are, I think there's going to be an adjustment involved anyway. But this video is not going to have the adjustment. This is the check. Really, the most difficult thing about this is getting all the stuff off. That's it. A check really shouldn't be that intimidating. Um, it, it's just, it's not that difficult and you're not going to screw anything up. We're not actually going to be making any changes. We're just checking the valve lash to see if it's within tolerance. We want the intakes between 0 0.004 and 0 0.008 thousandths and the exhaust between 0 0.008 and zero one two thousandths of an inch. So if you feel comfortable taking all the plastic bits off the fuel tank and removing the cooling system. So I, I dumped all the coolant out, I got the blue. You could just reuse this if it's not that old. Mine's about three or four years old, so it, it's due to get out anyway. If you feel comfortable doing this, I would do the check. It's expensive to have this done because of the amount of labor that's in it. It's not because it's a terribly difficult process. The adjustment's gonna be a different story, but the check's not that hard. So you, the gaskets inside of here, those are reusable. You can reuse those things. Uh, I might need a little bit of Honda Bond. Well, hopefully it doesn't have an allergic reaction being a Suzuki, but everybody bottles the same stuff inside of this. We're gonna be removing the spark plugs. So I like this little $5 Harbor Freight guy to get the spark plugs out. I need a feeler gauge for this because it's not a rock or lock nut setup. I don't believe, no, I don't need two of them, but um, I have two for other bikes. Um, to get some of the stuff off, I find this thing, I don't know, it's like three bucks at Harbor Freight, this hose puller to get all these things off makes things much easier. A torque wrench, technically you don't need it, but uh, these bolts on top of here, the factory people just go nuts and over tighten those things. It's only supposed to be 126 inch pounds. I think it's like 10 and a half foot pounds on the things. And it shouldn't be a fight, but it is. If it's leaking, there's other issues that you've got, and you can end up replacing these gaskets under here. And it's usually not even that one that you have to replace. Um, and then we're going to need an eight, a 10, and, and a six. And the six is gonna go into here to pull those off. The 10 is to pull this off so that we can put a 17 millimeter on the crank. And then this viewport here is an eight. Technically, don't even have to pull the viewport off to do the check because there's multiple different places you can uh, actually check the clearances because the cam is an eccentric lobe and so long as the lobe isn't pressing you can check but uh we'll, we'll try we'll do it on the actual marks for this video so i'm going to work the valve cover get the valve covers off both the front and the back actually i gotta get the spark plugs out of them now this one is a dual spark plug you only need to get one of the spark plugs out and the reason you need to get the spark plug out is so that you're not building compression inside of the cylinder so that you're able to rotate the motor uh, counterclockwise. You always want to move it counterclockwise. You want to go argue with people on the internet if it hurts it to go counterclockwise or go backwards, knock yourself out. But manual says only go forward, so I'm going to stick with that. So that's one of the spark plugs. I'm going to get this other one out. One thing that does happen sometimes when you're pulling these uh, covers off is they, they kind of just don't want to pull straight up. So usually once I get the bolts out, I go around and just honestly taps that hard in a couple spots and then you're able to pull it up. So I'll get that off. All right, let's get this valve cover off. All right, so these I know are torqued to 126 inch pounds, which is why I'm not gonna be fighting them too hard. Like that, see, I'm not grunting to get them off. However, when I pulled this off last night, I found out that, well, Hercules put them on the first time, which isn't good for them because it damages the gaskets. It squishes them more than they need to be squished. So overdoing it, one, it could cause leaks because of the gaskets, but two, if you, ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is why I painted my floor. I could find things on the ground and make it down there. Uh, what, what was number two? Oh, if you strip one of these into here, which I've done on a different bike, you are in a world of hurt, and it's not fun to have to redo it, which is, by redo it, I mean repair it, which is why I harp so much about 
the torque values on valve cover bolts because they just don't need to go on that hard and the consequences of stripping one is pretty severe. Now I don't know if you saw in those two when I was pulling them off there is a little rubber gasket under them and this one here this one on this side is a little bit different than these two. And when we when we reassemble something I should mention in case I forget to mention it later is that we do want to put fresh motor oil on the gaskets when we reassemble it uh, just to help it seal so I'm gonna have to go get some of my Rotella and get that out here as well. All right let's see if we can get this off I know probably gonna take up oh, it's not on that hard so that's already ready should come up the spot where it's gonna hold on the most is on the, the factory again they go nuts with the amount of sealant that they put on the thing and I think I even put too much on but I was just I did, took the front off already I'm just having to pick gobs of sealant off that the factory put on so you want to bring this gasket with you can buy new gaskets however they're rubber they're pliable this one is reusable and I'm just struggling with that rear half moon and here we go there it is I want to point out something that I was thinking about all day that I did incorrectly. I put too much of the sealant on. And the, th the issue with it is, the only spots you really need it is right where the flat plane meets the half moon. So it really doesn't even need it that much on here, though the factory calls for it. It's this spot here, 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 and here. You want to get some into those corners. I'm going to go and pick a lot of this off that I have. And the reason you don't want too much is it can fall into the engine. You don't want to block an oil port that's somewhere in here. I can see big globs of the black. That's the uh, that's the sealant the factory put in. So I don't like that because I don't like that potentially falling into the engine, which is why I'm going to scrape off some of my sins from yesterday. So now, in order for us to rotate the engine, we need to get the sight port out and then this crank poured out. So I already loosened these already. This is a 10 millimeter. It's got an O-ring on it there. And then the sight port is an eight and it's right there. And again, you can get around having to do this. The SV or uh, DL is so easy that it makes sense to just pull this off. Some bikes, you have to pull the whole side cover off, in which case you can do it without that. Just put it in gear with the spark plugs out and you can rotate the wheel to spin the motor. But way easier on this bike because of the access so we can get a 17 millimeter on here and i want to make sure that I'm, okay so that's counterclockwise i can get a 17 millimeter on there and what's going to happen hopefully you can see this but we're going to want because i'm going to be looking at this rear one first there's going to be some marks on here there's going to be an f and an r oh uh, there's an r right now I went a little bit past it, but that's okay. And I'm gonna show you why it's okay. This is what we're, I think it's actually gonna be, I think it's going to be this one here, which is the same one that I saw before. Um, that eccentric lobe on there, that's all going to be the exact same uh, radius, or well, length from the center of the cam so it's not going to be pushing at all we can't have the cams pushing on the bucket which pushes the valve and what they want is for us to have this in exact top dead center on the compression stroke and like maybe i don't know even by looking at them i'm like i still can't tell if the lobes are up or not that dot on there i know that that's pushing on it right now because that's on the exact opposite end so i'm 360 degrees out of phase the other thing you can do with something that's not going to break if you put it in there because i did it with a pencil yesterday and i was like what if i broke the tip off of it all right so now i've pushed this into the cylinder so when i rotate it's going to move up and down was i actually on the top well let's find out i want to get to the r again that's the r Okay, no, now that's all the way up. That matches my picture because I can see this lobe is this lobe right here and that's pushing up. I'm going to guess the other sides. Yep, we can see them. They're pushing up. So the intake's here, up. Exhaust, up, which means we can get a feeler gauge under there and check the clearance. That's really all there is to this. And actually, let's just go ahead and, and do it. So 
on the intakes what we're looking for is 0.004 to 0.008 uh, this low mileage i wouldn't expect the intakes to have moved much and honestly the intakes don't move as much the exhausts are the bigger issues you got so i'm going to take my 0.004 what i'm going to do it works better if you got angled feeler gauges a lot of people recommend those i don't have any these work fine see 0.004 goes under there and 0.004 goes under so my left side intake and my right side intake i'm good at 0.004 so so long as i can't fit a 0.009 in there i'm within spec but let's we're just gonna keep stepping up so I'm gonna try the 0.005, that one. So that actually has that, it's kind of like, a, I described it as like, a, I don't know who described it to me, but it's like a magnetic feel to it. I potentially might get a 006 under there. And then that one fits under there as well. So let's try the 0.006 on the intakes. If you wanna be anything, you want to be on the looser end of tolerance when it comes to valves. They say tappy valves or happy valves. 006, okay, that does fit. That's harder than I wanna push. So this is a tight 006. And this, hold on. This one is also a tight, that's also a tight 006. I know I'm not gonna fit the 007 in there, but for posterity, let's go ahead and do it. 007 is not fitting, 007 is not fitting. So I have a tight 006 on both the intakes on the rear. Where did my thing go? So I need to actually update that, which is probably a good thing. I won't use a red pen because these are in spec, but that is my intake. I'm gonna call 006 tight and 0 0.006 tight on both of those both of those are within spec and that's cool so with the cylinder or the i guess the piston all the way up and at the same spot we can check the exhaust now the exhaust <sighs> exhausts have a wider tolerance on them and it's more likely for the exhaust to drift zero zero eight coming in he fits in there and he fits in there. All right, so 009. Realistically, I'd like all these to be on the loose end of tolerance, but these ones I'm probably not going to, do, going to adjust. Okay, 009, super tight on there, but it does fit. Super tight nine on that one as well. Here's my 10 Goldilocks here. Goldilocks isn't gonna fit. Goldilocks isn't gonna fit. So I've got nine tight, truthfully, on both of those. So neither of those actually need any adjusting. In fact, button it up. You're good, you're done. I'm a little bit nuts about this and that I don't wanna do this again because I still expect, if anything, it's gonna drift within the first 10,000 miles. And what happens is valves in 99.8% of cases tighten up over time it's really rare that the wear actually increases the amount of valve lash which is the space between that lobe and the bucket it's really rare that they open up over time so realistically what i'd like to be is at like 0 0.011 and 0 0.011 on the exhaust and six tight is fine here i'd probably rather be seven tight on the intakes but this isn't enough for any amount of concern these intakes are great. They're probably set there exactly from factory. So all we gotta do now is get to top dead center for the front cylinder on the compression stroke, which will be an F mark. And we'll want, instead of this configuration, we will have this configuration where our little eggs are pointing outwards like that. So now I have, we're gonna be looking at the front cylinder. I've got the mark. It might be a little tough to see. I just, I'm like, a half a centimeter past but i'm on the f basically i'm looking at the f what we're looking for is those lobes to be shooting outwards and what that looks like here see how i can actually see the physical lobe of that guy right well it's tough to point but i can see that the lobe is pointing out it's actually like pointing right at the center of the front wheel 
that means it's not pushing at all. And then on the tops here, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Well, I can see that the lobes are pushing straight up, which means we're going to be able to get our feeler gauge in underneath right there. So now we can take the readings on the front cylinder. I do apologize. I'm on the struggle bus a bit on how to actually film this correctly. Hopefully it shows something useful, but I'm going to look at the intakes first, which are going to be on the top here. Intakes are always closer to the center of the engine. So I'm going to start with that 0 .004. And real easy, real easy. So I'm actually going to guess I can jump right past 0.006 or 005. Eh, it's right there. Let's try it. Easy again. Oh, and a little tougher on that one. I'm going to guess we got six tights on both of those. Let's find out. Whew, that one might not need adjusting. And, okay, I can't, okay, that is a, that is a tight six on the right. I think we can go, I think we got more clearance on the left, though. Nope, we don't. So, we have a loose six and a tight six, which is pretty good news for us there. I don't know, I, I to, which one was which? I want to write that down. If I don't write it, then I'll forget. So the left is 0 0.006, and the tight, or sorry, the right is a 0 006 tight. Cool. Let's check the exhaust. I am going to start with a 008. These are usually the hardest to get to, but you can still get to them. So, okay, 008's in. Fine, 008 is in fine. It had some resistance though, so I don't think we're gonna see a 010. I think we're gonna be stuck at 009. So 009, super tight on the left. So we got a 009 tight on the left. And we got a tight on the right. I think we're at nine tight on both of those. We'll try Goldilocks here, which is a 010, not happening. Not happening. So I got 009 tights on both of my front exhausts, which again, well, it's within spec. Uh, I just, I would prefer it higher, but it's within spec. So that's a valve clearance adjustment. I mean, we're basically done. I'll walk through the finishing up, but that's it. So to finish this thing up, all we gotta do is really put the bike back together. Um, and the last part of this valve adjustment is putting the valve cover back on. So I'm not going to actually do this part because I think I've got it in my head that I am going to adjust my clearances. I think I'm going to do the shim adjustment just because I mean, I got four months before it's even going to be able to ride outside. So, and I, I want to learn more about it. But from what I saw on the clearances, we're fine with spec. I do have a couple conspiracy theories about why these bikes are just always tight right away. And I think one is because it makes less, when you've got a tighter tolerance on the valves, it makes less ticking noise. The ticking noise, it sounds bad. And the first time I ever adjusted my interceptor, which is sitting right behind there, I couldn't believe how much louder it was. But my valves, when I got in there, they literally was no clearance. I was about to fry a valve in that thing. So when it actually opened up, it made the tappy noise. The tappy valves are happy valves, and you just gotta remember that, but it's kinda tough to hear. So I think on a showroom floor, it sounds better if they're tighter, which is why I think they put them to the tighter end of tolerance. The other conspiracy theory, follow the money. If it's tighter, it goes out of tolerance quicker. Most of these people, most people are bringing it to a dealership. You could charge a whole lot of money for this. There's not a lot of parts involved. It's a lot of labor. You can get a low level employee to do this and I think it can bring in a bunch of money. Those are my conspiracy theories. I think we're, I think they're right. Because <laughs> if not, these things shouldn't be so close to tolerance. They should set them at the far end of tolerance from the factory, but they don't. I think it's all the move units, but anyway, so what we want to do here is grab a little bit of your Honda Bond, which is the same as Suzuki Bond, which is the same as Kaui Bond, which is the same as Yamaha Bond. 
there, 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 and there are the important spots. I'd still put a light film over the half moons and I cleared some of this off from the old one. It Just don't go nuts on it. And if you wanna be heavier anywhere, do it towards the outside so when it squishes, it's squishing more to the out. You don't, you don't want stuff falling into the engine. That's the big thing. And the other part, grab a little motor oil and just wet the outside of the gasket the whole way around all of it after you've done the Honda Bond, Suzuki Bond, whichever bike I'm working on, and it'll help it seal. So I've been trying to figure out my purpose in life, like most human beings on the planet have, and I've been struggling because I don't know why I'm here. And it's, I mean, it's an existential question. Nobody really knows why we're here, but some people do seem to find purpose. And I think my purpose on this planet is to get people to not over torque fucking bolts on valve covers. So these three, one, this is the gasket I was talking about here. I wanna get that little bit off. This is the gasket, you can replace these. If you're leaking from here, replace the big gasket and replace these. I think the factory may have already screwed these by how tight they put them on. But if my purpose in life is anything, it is to get people to stop over torquing these. So from Harbor Freight, you are able to buy a torque wrench. It's not the best torque wrench in the world, but it is a torque wrench. Bring it up to get the quarter inch one and bring it up to, well, it's gonna be in inch pounds, but I think the manual says 10 and a half foot pounds, which works out to 126 inch pounds. And you bring it up there, uh, what is that, 110, 125, 126. Go around these. And usually I start at 95, 95, 95 and then I torque to 126, 126, 126. I'm gonna go a little bit different on this because I'm not actually gonna be seating this valve cover. Come on. But, oh yeah, yeah, my purpose, my purpose in all of this is to show. That's it, 126 inch pounds. Please, don't go over that. You don't need to. That's what it was designed for. Maybe the Suzuki technicians that are putting these bikes together should be taught that. Um, there'll be a follow-up to this if you want to see an adjustment video. But if you've been worried about doing a valve clearance check and you're like, I don't have $500 to pay, but I know I'm supposed to do it, don't be that intimidated. It's just taking some stuff off the bike. You got to do a cool and flush anyway. This is real easy. There's no chance of damaging the bike. When we do the adjustment, because we're going to be messing with the timing and whatnot, yeah, there is Dan, there is a chance to damage the bike. And yeah, I am going to be a little bit scared to do it. But the check? No way. Easy peasy. Uh, you watch Spar. Thanks for watching.